during the Industrial Revolution, in fact, the rich got richer and the poor got richer. Prior to learning economics and learning economic history, I had thought as a humanist that under laissez-faire capitalism, rich get richer and the poor get poorer. If I believe that to this day, I would be against capitalism, unambiguously. Conscious capitalism requires that we wake up, that we become aware of the things that are pulling on us, that are grabbing our attention. With properly structured capitalism, and that's a very, very important clause, with properly structured capitalism, the poor get richer and the rich get richer. It's a win, 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 win game. And that turns me on. I'm very fired up and excited about that because it means human flourishing isn't trapped in some type of a limited set of constraints. It means we can innovate and create our ways out of any of these traps. It works. That's the hardest thing about talking about conscious capitalism to people. People think that we're just being altruistic. No, if all you want to do is make as much money as possible, as rapidly as possible, I would submit to you that this methodology is the best way to get there. And the CEOs that I'm seeing here are just passionate visionaries and they get it in their gut. This is not cognitive. For the earlier part of the movement, I think a lot of it was theoretical. These people are living it on the ground. They're facing the daily decisions of do I close a store or don't I close a store? How do I handle the recession? Am I going to lay people off or is there some other solution to this problem? What conscious capitalism is all about is practicing the golden rule. Not he or she who has the gold rules. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you treat people like you want to be treated. You treat your employees like you want to be treated. You treat your vendor partners like you want to be treated. You treat the consumers like you want to be treated. You treat the environment like you want to be treated. You treat society like you want to be treated. My vendor's about to crater. Do I make a loan to my vendor for the sake of long-term relationship with that vendor? And as we heard one speaker say, later on the vendor turned around and made a loan back to him when he was struggling. The creativity, the innovation, the passion, the gut level commitment, and the actually doing something is what's made this movement different for me. As a culture, we are starting to recognize you can, you can never get enough of what you don't really want. Try it as it sounds that if you're not finding a deeper purpose in your actions, in your life, and in your community, that it doesn't matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter how much fame you get, that's not the payout window for really a satisfied and happy life. When you work from a higher purpose, you, you unleash greater degrees of commitment, greater degrees of loyalty, and greater creativity in the workplace. And that gives competitive advantage. These companies, along with a lot of other very successful companies, have focused on something more than just making money. They really have had almost a maniacal focus on delivering value to their customer and of taking care of their employee. They have been consistent in that message so that it permeates the company. The word integrity means to make whole and, and that's really what we're after. We're here to be as whole and as complete as we can. The old militaristic style of uh, of business um, doesn't work. It doesn't rhyme with the human spirit enough to make it work. This movement is a story that needs to be told around the business communities around the world. But you know why people are going to buy it? Because it's common sense.